Hey folks, welcome back to the old jarhead. There's an old expression that I heard, oh, I don't know, maybe three decades ago, and it was that if you sit on the fence, the only thing you're gonna get is splinters up your butt. <laughs> but you know, it's a really good expression because at the time, I was looking at single speed CD-ROMs, gives you an idea how long ago it was, and I knew that double speed CD-ROMs were coming out at some point in the near future. I could wait for that double speed CD-ROM to come out and then a triple speed or a quadruple speed one will be waiting to come out and I'll just keep waiting. So what does that have to do with today's video? <laughs> well, I wanna talk about inverters and in particular, inverter idle power. In an off-grid power system, or frankly any system that you're using solar to generate power, you have DC power coming from your solar panels and that power is generally run through a charge controller, which then feeds that DC power to your battery and charges it up. To get that DC power from your battery and provide 120 volt power to your cabin, your house, your RV, whatever it is you're doing, you need an inverter. So what does that all have to do with, the, with today's topic? Well, inverters use power. And the one that I was playing with recently, the Lee Time Solar Inverter Charger, it's an all-in-one system, it uses a specified amount of power. And many said, hey, watch out, it uses like 50 watts of consumption. In other words, it uses 50 watts nonstop all the time to run the inverter. And I thought, okay. And frankly, today's video is gonna be really about why I don't care, why I don't pay that much attention. And it has to do with both getting splinters in your butt, but also something I like to call analysis paralysis, which is where you spend too much time worrying about all kinds of things before ever putting a system together and powering up your cabin. And then because you're sitting on the fence, you get splinters instead of having power in your cabin. So what does that have to do with consumption, power consumption of an inverter? Well, what many say is if it uses 50 watts, which by the way, it doesn't, I ran some tests, but if it uses 50 50 watts, that's like 1,200 watts in a 24-hour period. Yep, it is, you're absolutely right. But that does not mean that you need 1,200 watts of solar panels in order to run the inverter. <laughs> that's not how it works. So, first of all, because I'd had comments saying that this unit uses 50 watts at idle all the time, I decided to give it a 24-hour test and find out if that's true. I charged up this golf cart battery that I have right here. It's a Lee Time 51.2 volt, 100 amp hour battery, and I charged it up. And then I turned everything on and I started my test. 24 hours later, I found that it used 38.4 watts of idle power consumption, that's per hour. So the total it used was 921.6 watts according to my calculations. Not quite the 1200, but still quite a bit, right? Almost a thousand watts. But what does that really mean? Well, first of all, it means that you are going to need a certain amount of solar panels in order to provide the power that your inverter or your all-in-one system like this one will consume in a 24-hour period, or actually more likely in about a 16-hour period, because let's be honest, the sun does come up and your solar panels will begin to produce power. And when they begin to produce power, they might not produce very much, but as long as they're producing at least the 38.4 that this is consuming, you're not draining your batteries anymore. That's number one. Number two, if you only get two hours of sunlight, so you're talking the dead of winter around December 21st, where I'm at up near the Canadian border, if I only get two hours of sunlight, how much of a solar panel do I need just to recoup the power loss on my batteries keeping my system running? Well, if I were running this system, then I would need 460 watts of solar in that two hour period, assuming I never produced any other power the entire day, which if you don't know, you will. Even on cloudy days, you're going to produce power as long as the sun's in the sky. It's gotta be very dark, very rainy, very snowy, something. The panels have to be shaded. There's gotta be something that's preventing those panels from producing any power at all. And in the winter, when it's cold and the sun's up, they actually produce even more power than they're rated at typically. So yeah, I need 460, actually like 460.8 watts of solar power to recoup the loss as long as I had a couple hours. And then yes, if I didn't have any more sun for 22 hours, well then I'd need even more the next day if I only had two hours. 
but I've got over 2,400 watts of solar at my cabin. I got enough. And I only use, currently with the system I have, just shy of 2,800 watts in about a 16 hour period from when the sun goes down and the sun comes up and the solar panels start to produce again. So if I'm using 2,800 watts and my system up there, which actually uses more than this does, it uses about 49 and a half watts per hour because I'm running a low frequency inverter charger and that inverter uses about 48 watts to run. So 48 watts times however many hours that there's no sunlight and no production at all, I've got to recoup, but I also have two charge controllers, each of which can consume anywhere from a half of a watt to a watt and a half per hour. So it runs approximately 49 and a half or 50 watts of idle consumption, just sitting there doing nothing. Sun goes down and I'm draining that 50 watts all the time. Now that is not in an eco mode. I don't run eco modes. Quite frankly, I don't like them. To be honest, you could run multiple inverters and a lot of guys recommend that and I've often given it some thought. So I could run a thousand watt inverter that's really efficient and run that one just to charge those essential things that I need, like my generator. My Generac EcoGen 6KW needs power to it at all times or the battery will drain. That's why whenever I go up to my cabin, I gotta reconnect the battery, and when I leave, I disconnect the battery. I've got a little knife switch on it so that I can disconnect the battery. Because if my power is turned off, that battery's gonna die. So. If I'm up there, and when I was living there, I had to leave it on all the time. I left my inverter on all the time, and I thought seriously about putting in a smaller inverter just to not consume as much power. And if I could get away with, say, a third of the amount of power being consumed, maybe 10 watts, well, that would certainly save me a little bit in solar production the next day. But the reason I don't worry about it is because what you do when you build an off-grid system, or what you should do, is build a, what I like to call, power budget. And you put everything in that power budget that you're going to run and how long you're gonna run it. And one of the things you should put in there is your inverter and your charge controllers. Or if you've got an all-in-one system, which is using less power than what I have now, you put that in there. So that at the end of the day, everything is accounted for and you build your solar array or solar arrays to account for that. And quite frankly, solar panels are super cheap right now. I was looking at some panels on Signature Solar that are like 94 bucks a panel and I want to say they were like 360 watt or 90 watt panels or something like that. Well, that's nothing. 100 bucks. They've got panels that are like 500 watt panels, bifacial panels for 177 bucks a piece. In the grand scheme of things, it's cheap. So you add a solar panel and walk away and never even think about it. I don't get splinters up my butt and I don't get analysis paralysis. So idle power consumption, yes, that's the power used by your solar power components when they're just sitting there, whether you're using them or not. As long as they're turned on, they're gonna use power. And yes, you should account for that when you build your solar array. But should you spend a lot of time worrying about it? I personally don't, and I don't think that there's a lot of value in that. For example, yes, I can buy this inverter charger, this all-in-one system, for about $530. And in fact, I've got a link down below that'll give you like a 6% discount on it as well. So $500, $500, $530, or I could spend twice that and get a unit that's, well, got a different name brand and maybe it's a better quality unit and maybe it idles at half the power, but frankly, I could spend $177 and get a 500 watt solar panel and as long as I got a couple hours of sunlight, I'm putting in enough power that I don't gotta worry about it. And because I've got two solar arrays, one that I can tilt and move around, that I can keep the snow off in the wintertime and that produces over 600 watts when the sun's hitting it, I don't really worry. I only need about 800 watts of solar to get my system back up to 100% within a four hour window. And I've got over 2400 watts. So I don't worry about it. Now, you may not have that, but I would tell you that I think that there is more value in buying more solar panels than there is in worrying about idle consumption. So, in conclusion, 
The, the lead time solar inverter charger all in one system only used 38.4 watts of consumption power in a 24 hour period. That was 921.6 watts of power. That was it. That is not a lot. That does not freak me out. That doesn't make me worry at all. Yes, it drained this battery down into like the 83% range or 82%, but to me, that's why you have enough battery power and that's why you have enough solar. If you're worrying about your idle consumption on your components, you've either got analysis paralysis or you're spending too much time worrying about those or maybe you've got so much money that it's not an issue. <laughs> but, but for me, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time worrying about it because I can just spend a little bit of money on another solar panel and I'm good to go. Not an issue, I'm not worried about it. So. It sips the power, uses about 10 watts less power than the system I'm currently running. So there you have it, folks. I hope that helps somebody out and prevents them from getting splinters up their butt or getting analysis paralysis. Meanwhile, I will drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.